Hello, this is T Chapman 500. Today I'm going to be showing you some progress I made to the 32 bit CPU. I haven't been working on this in a while, but I have just now redesigned the general purpose register or the general purpose registers and the stuff around it. So if we go into the GPR block, you can see that the only thing here are the registers, the um, circuit, the circuit for the register output, and the circuit for the register input. These things right here and across here are called tunnels and they allow me to wire things together that are otherwise physically separated. It helps keep everything nice and neat. So let's take a look at some of these circuits. So we were just viewing this circuit. So let me zoom in. And there are 31 registers, as well as um, a zero output for address 32, or actually this is address 31. The addressing starts at zero. So zero to 31, that's 32 registers. The, the R31 is always zero and cannot be written to. So that's going to prove useful for various things, both on the hardware design side and on the programming side. Here we have a register swapper. We're going to take a look at that. We have the A and B inputs and the A and B outputs, and if you notice, these lines from A to B are physically swapped inside the circuit. We have a little enable circuit as well as something to um, check to see if we're, say, trying to swap A with A, which doesn't work well. And there is an output flag for the illegal operation. And the thing is, A has to be less than B. It cannot be equal or greater than B. So the next device on this circuit is the loop tracker. The loop tracker takes an A and B input, which will be set to registers two and three. So this is the loop counter and this is the loop target. When the enable circuit is active, we can um, either increment or decrement the loop counter until it reaches the target or we can just loop to zero and in that case it will um, ignore this target value completely. And there's also a break loop output signal that tells the CPU or the control unit to go to the address after, to go to the instruction after the loop instruction rather than jumping back to the beginning of the loop. The next circuit is the Hold on. The next circuit is the address control circuit. Take a look at that. We have three data inputs, one from the GPR block and the other two. This one comes directly from the main data bus. And when we're given an instruction to have an address plus an offset, that's where this comes in. It's locked into a register 
and sent through an adder. So if we say put 10 in this circuit and 20 in this, write enable clock, we can see that the output is 10 plus 20. So this is the base address, this is the offset. We have this locked into a register here so that we can put other things on this data bus without doing stuff here. And we can also have, we also have a third input from the instruction pointer or program counter, depending on what you want to call it. They're the same thing. So the program counter is basically an address to the current or next instruction. We just send it to the address if we select this. And then there's also an address overflow flag, which I'm not sure what I should do with that. Next on the list is the program counter or instruction pointer. So inside we have the data coming in from the data bus. It can be set to the instruction pointer register. And that loops around to an adder. We can add any number between 0 and 31 to the instruction pointer. Although this might change because there may be instances when we want to add more to that. We also have a load. By the way, I've tied the load on the counter to the positive end of the power supply as well as the, um, I think this is the count itself. Yeah, but this really doesn't matter since this is always one. We have the write enable, we have the clock, and we can reset it. That's what I have so far. Now the reason I redesigned it this way is because of a principle known as KISS, or keep it simple, stupid. So the previous design attempts I did weren't quite made under that principle, but this one is. Oh, and the address out from here goes to um, the address bus. So we essentially have one, two, three buses on this CPU so far. And then a bunch of signal lines going to these components. Some of the things that are missing right now are the arithmetic logic unit, which will go about here, a few other specialty circuits, which will go around in this area, and of course the control unit, which will be here. That's why all this space here is freed up, and the circuit is to the right. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, save this off. Uh, thank you. Please leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope to be doing more of this in the future. Hopefully once a week. Of course, I've said that before. This is T. Chapman 500 signing off.